We're here with uh, head coach David Dean, week 11 of the 2017 football season, ahead of the West Florida uh, game. Coach Dean, I'll start with some comments and then open up for questions. Well, first off, it's hard to believe this is the last regular season game. Seems like this uh, season has flown by. Uh, it's been a fun season. It's been an interesting season. Uh, but uh, we're excited to uh, knock this long bus ride out from, from Melbourne, Florida, and get it an opportunity to be back at home, Rayland Field, and uh, be in front of our home crowd again and, and uh, so hopefully send these seniors off uh, with a great victory. Got 10 seniors that will be playing their last regular season game in, uh, in, on Rayland Field, and hopefully it's not going to be their last game there. But uh, uh, we got you know some business that we got to take care of. But uh, looking forward to, to a great afternoon, We're getting some finally getting some, some football weather in here. And uh, looking forward to a uh, to a great Gulf South Conference contest to, to finish off the regular season. Coach, could you uh, talk about how impactful this game is right before the playoffs? Well, you know, all, obviously all of them are pretty impactful, but uh, we're we're playing a team right now that I think it may be one of the hottest teams in the in the conference. Uh, in in their second year, what they have done with their program is, is absolutely incredible. Uh, to be in a position where uh, they have a chance to make the playoffs, they're number 10 in the region in their second year of playing football. That, that's a phenomenal job, not only by their coaching staff, but their players. Uh, so this is a huge game. Uh, you know, to, don't, don't take anything for granted on, on this. Uh, this is a game that is very impactful for us. Uh, we, we must win, I feel like, to stay in the playoff hunt. We must win to hopefully have a first-round opportunity to play at home in the playoffs. Uh, but more importantly, we, we want to get to 9-2. and two. We want to finish second in the Gulf South Conference race. We can't win it, uh, but we can finish second, and that's exactly what we want to do. Coach, after a real grinded-out game last week, talk about how winning a game like that can really just increase the confidence of your team. Well, I told our team in the locker room after the game this, this was the ultimate team win uh, because – from a standpoint, our defense played outstanding football. And then in the second half, our defense was able to get off the field, number one, by, by the way that they played, but our offense held the ball for a long time. We had 90-something snaps in that game. So we kept the defense from getting on the field. And when our defense needed a break, we put together long drives. We may not have scored touchdowns, but we put together long drives. And when we had to come up with a big play, our defense did it. And we had to make a big special team play in that game, and we did. We, we got the kickoff that, uh, that we, we knocked loose and, and recovered that. Um, so from, from a standpoint of an ultimate team win, I think that's what that was. And hopefully that's going to be something that we can continue to build on because we all relied on each other in that game, and it wasn't just one particular side of the ball that, that basically won that game for us. Coach, you're about to play a a UWF team that's coming off of a 37 to, 30 to 7 victory over North Alabama, a game in which they got seven sacks, nine tackles for losses. What is their front seven doing to, you know, really apply pressure and get in the backfield? One thing they did a great job of, I think, was they they put North Alabama in a state of confusion. Uh, they had a, a fresh quarterback, a new quarterback in there, and they brought blitzes from a lot of different places. They're a three-man front team, but they got seven around the box. So you don't ever know where they're bringing guys from. Uh, they do a great job of getting their safeties involved in the run game. Their safeties don't miss tackles. So if you do happen to crease past the front seven, those safeties always end up making great plays. They're playing great defense right now. But what they did to North Alabama – was not give up a big play. And they forced them to have to drive the length of the field over and over with a, with a new quarterback, and they weren't able to do that. And, and like I said earlier, they are play, you can tell they're playing with a lot of confidence, in, in, and they're putting their guys in position to make plays because of the way that they're playing right now. And I think a lot of that has to do uh, with the confidence that they're carrying out on the field every day. Coach, West Florida is one of the worst teams statistically running the ball. Your defense only allows three and a half yards per worst. How do you expect your defense to play against the run attack? This well, you know, we're going to have to stop the run, obviously. That's going to be the big thing. But what we're, we're really concerned with is how they throw the football. And the reason they're probably not getting a lot of yards running the football is because of how well they throw it. 
and it's so difficult to get pressure on the quarterback because he catches the ball and gets rid of it. As soon as you clear the line, the ball's gone, and you're turning and having to chase down. They really put you in a state where you are reversing field all of the time. You, you're, you're constantly in a chase mode in, when you play these guys, and that's a credit to them. They do a great job offensively. They, they create – opportunities for their guys to get in space. They've got big receivers that they can throw the ball down the field. And, again, it's one of those things where the quarterback catches it and he lets it go, and their guys run up under it. So it's it's very difficult for us to, to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. And, uh, you know, again, I, I don't think that they're going to go away from their run game. Uh, in, in, in games where they have been able to throw the ball, they continue to do that. But when they have been able to run the ball – they were able to do that. If you go back and you look at the West Alabama film, boy, they were running the ball very, very well against a good defense. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're still going to have to be, from, from the two phases of them offensively from the pass game and the run game, we're going to have to be sound in what we do and not let them uh, get on track with their run game. Coach, A for 21 last week on third downs. How can you all execute better this week on Thursday now, so you keep the chains move a little bit more this Saturday? Well, we've got to play better up front. You know, one thing we didn't do was sustain blocks in our run game. Uh, we didn't climb up to the next level as good as we should have. Uh, we did not pass protect very well. And, uh, you know, they got a great defensive line, and we knew that going into the game, and they exposed us a little bit. They, they probably played a little bit better than we did. Um, but, again, when it came down to it and we had to put together drives, we were able to do that. Uh, we just started out very sluggish early in the game, and, and, and they came out on fire in, in the things that they were doing. So, uh, again, it, it all comes down to execution. We've just got to do a better job on the perimeter with our blocking, with our wide receivers, sustaining blocks, and in the interior with our, with our front five up there, those guys have got to be able to finish off blocks and climb to the next level and get to linebackers, and that's something that we didn't do last week. Coach, John Williams is WF's defensive sack leader. How are you hoping to keep him to get into the backfield? Well, same thing. we got to execute. You know, we gotta, we got to take our proper steps and our pass protection. we got to get our hands on him, get him extended. Uh, when we don't have work up front, maybe we don't have somebody to block, we got to go back and we gotta, we got to look for work. we got to help. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, we left our guys a lot of times on an island last week and we we just can't do that when, when we don't have work we got to find work uh, but you know I, I think our guys when they go back and they watch that film after the game they were a little embarrassed about what happened and the way that they played and I think they'll come out and they'll respond and you know and again we're facing take nothing for granted Florida Tech's really good up front they really really are they got the best defensive end I think in the conference and then they got a nose man that's extremely quick and strong and, um, you know, they, they put their guys in good position sometimes, and they, they, they whipped us at, at times. And fortunately for us, we kind of wore them down, and that's what ended up being the difference in the game. Coach, kind of talked about already huge game this weekend. Talk about the excitement around the program right now. Well, obviously, you know, you, you have a hard time not looking ahead of or where are we going to be, what are we going to do. It doesn't matter if we don't take care of business on Saturday. But there is a lot of uh, excitement. You know, I was a little afraid when we go, went out to practice yesterday, would we have, uh, would we, we'd be a little bit tired after having that long bus trip coming back and getting back at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but our guys came out with great enthusiasm. I was, I was glad to see that. I think they know what's at stake. They know that they're sitting in an opportunity where they have another opportunity to play at home. They have an opportunity to be one of 28 of, of 163 or so Division II teams, and they can be an elite company. And you think about it, there's 40, I think there's 43 teams in our region alone, and right now we're number four. This is a lot for our kids. You put them in the position that they're in. So, uh, you know, they know what's at stake. They have an opportunity to come out and play another game of football, which is what they love to do. But more importantly, I think they're excited about sending these seniors off, especially a guy like Zed Brown and Harley Vaughn, who've been here for four years, sending those guys off with a victory and moving on and carrying some momentum into the playoffs.